thankful for this opportunity that you've carved out into your schedules to be here. Um, even in the midst of difficulty, right? And uncertainty and confusion and all that stuff that is going on um, within us, right? Quote for today is by Carl Jung. It's entitled Vision. And he says, your vision will come clear only when you look into your heart. Who looks outside dreams? Who looks inside awakens? <clears throat> your vision will become clear only when you look into your heart. Who looks outside dreams? Who looks inside awakens? So let's allow ourselves to awaken. Begin to quiet out the external noises, allow ourselves to take our gaze inward, guided and moved by each inhale, which allows us to be totally aware of what's going on, where we're at, what's happening with our bodies, what we feel, what we're experiencing. Mm, noticing the, all, the, all the little subtleties, right? Feel free to close the eyes if they're not already. You can breathe in life, length, and open, and let go, and soften, and be, and just breathe. Start to feel that beautiful light that is there for all of us shining through us. And then perhaps sitting up a little taller, maybe broadening a bit more. As you scan your bodies, just begin to notice where there's tightness, where there's tension. And allowing your in-breath and your out-breath to provide you with a different level of peace, even in the midst of. Trusting that this too shall pass. Allowing your in-breath to represent more of what you need, right? Allowing the out-breath to represent what you don't want, what you don't need. Take a deep breath in and retain it at the top. Ujjayi exhale slowly. <clears throat> deep breath in and hold. Ujjayi exhale. Let's do it one more time. Deep breath in and hold. Ujjayi, exhale slowly. Let's take the next few moments just to continue to, to let go.
to experience a deeper sense of connection. Allow in our practice today to mm. allow us to truly clear particles away from our lenses, perhaps, right? So that our vision becomes more clear. Maybe sitting up a little taller. Blinking the eyes softly open. And then let's just make giant circles. Noticing your breath. And then making that transition nice and smooth circles in the opposite direction. Notice if you have that tendency to kind of round the shoulders for it. Can you continue to sit up tall as you make those circles? And then see what happens, right? If you imagine yourself with a string attached to the crown of your head, and even though you're circling, just imagine that string being pulled so maybe you were experiencing some crunching, right? Doing that rotation and let's change directions. Maybe you were noticing some crunching and then again, imagine as you're growing taller, allowing for a little bit more space between the vertebrae, maybe that crunching goes away. Noticing the, the effect of lightness and changing direction last time, as opposed to heaviness. And let's come back to neutral. And then just take your right ear to your right shoulder. Again, finding that space, right? So notice if the chin is heavy versus light. Notice what happens when you begin to sit up maybe a little taller. And, and not mandatory, right? Um, but maybe taking your right hand and just resting it lightly on your left ear, right? Or not. Feel free to stay right where you are. Good. Let's come back to center, sitting tall, and taking the ear over to your left shoulder. And again, notice how you are sitting. Where are you most comfortable? Maybe start to experience a little discomfort. And then really pay attention to how you're breathing in and through that discomfort. Just take your head back to center. Let's come into extended child's pose. And then right away, let's bend the elbows to allow your shoulders to relax.
uh, respecting what your knees are telling you. Feel free to take them as wide as they need to. Check in with your fingers. Right, can you spread them a little wider, maybe? Can you breathe in maybe a little bit more length in and up your spine as you walk your hands out in front of you? Doing your best to not hunch the shoulders. So really check in, right? Check in with the amount of space that you're allowing yourself to have between your shoulders and ears. And walking the hands gently off to the left side of your mat. Breathing your stretch into the right side of your body. Creating this again, as much space as you can between the shoulders and the ear without forcing anything, without straining, without <coughs> holding your breath to achieve that. So maybe you begin to press through the right armpit. I know for me that allows me to feel the stretch on a deeper level, whatever that means for you. Maybe you've been working super hard this week on a deeper level. Maybe today is the day that you um, just be a little bit more kinder, a little bit more gentler, gentle to yourself. Offering yourself up a little more self compassion. Right? Not mistaking softness for a weakness, weakness, but finding some more softness. You turn your hands back to center. And then walking them off to the right. Filling that stretch in the left side of your body as much as you like to experience. with the emphasis on gentle, long, controlled inhales and exhales. Hmm. Let's return your hands back to center. Maybe again, walk the hands further, spreading the fingers wider, pressing through the palms more, engaging your forearms, space between your shoulders and ears, smooth, steady, inhales and exhales. Very nice, let's shift your way forward coming into tabletop. Spreading the fingers nice and wide, take a deep breath. On the exhale, let's round your back, tuck your chin. Inhales, you draw your chest through. Exhale, round. Chest draws through on the inhale. Exhale, round. Inhale, the chest. Rounding and tucking, moving and breathing at your own pace. Feel free. Add something. Take something away. Explore. Just allowing yourself to truly feel awake. Just engaged as to what you're experiencing. Where's your awareness? A couple more inhales and exhales. Next inhale, let's come into a flat back. And then let's come into downward facing dog. All right, finding that triangle shape in your body. Feel free to adjust it to accommodate you what you're experiencing right now in your body, right? Respecting areas of tightness and discomfort or tension. And just start to notice how you handle, how you deal with, how you breathe into any discomfort or tightness that you might be experiencing. How can you manipulate or modify or adjust your body that you can find some space, experience some ease, Take the struggle off, right? Offer yourself up some softness. 
slowly as you walk your hands back to meet your feet. Halfway lift on the inhale. Folding forward on the exhale. Inhale as you reach the arms high. Exhale as you fold forward. Now, how smoothly can you smooth out those transitions? Halfway lift on the inhale. Folding forward on the exhale. Arms, let's reach them high on the inhale. Folding forward on the exhale. Mm, halfway lift on the inhale. Folding forward on the exhale. Arms, let's reach them high on the inhale. Mm, prayer hands are heart tension. And then Tadasana. So let's bring the feet together. So we'll stand here at the back of the mat. And then let's take the weight into the left foot. And all we're going to do is just simply bend the right knee, reach for the ankle. All right. Start to wrap the knee in towards the standing knee. Maybe one hand holding onto the back of the foot. Maybe two hands. And then see if you can stand up nice and tall. Checking in, right? So broadening across the check in the chest and the shoulders. Softening your dristy gaze out in front of you. So can you begin to root down into the sole of the left foot, but feel yourself lifting up, right? So that you can gain a little bit more length, start to experience a little more coolness, a little more lightness in that left hip. Then trust, trust yourself that you can soften the toes of the left foot. Maybe start to hug that heel in a little closer, depending on what you're experiencing in the stretch in the front of the leg, right? The thigh, the quadricep. Couple more breaths right here. Good, gently release. And all we're gonna do is switch sides. Again, notice, notice where the left knee is in relationship to the right knee, right? Maybe closing that gap, allowing yourself to experience a little bit more stability. Then maybe one hand, maybe two hands. You can stand up tall. Just check in how it feels, how your lower back feels. Notice the direction of your ribs. Are they protruding forward? And then see what happens, right? If they're protruding forward, you feel a little, a little stress, a little discomfort, a little heaviness in the lower back. Begin to draw the front ribs in. Mm -hmm. Opening across the chest. Yeah, so depending on how high you're hugging or how close you're hugging that left heel, uh, left heel in, will determine if you're starting to experience some of that stretch in the front of the body as well, the chest and the shoulders, as well as the front of the leg. A couple more breaths right here. And you soften the toes of the right foot again, just trust. Lift up, hug in, release. Nice, make your way forward to stand at the top of the mat. So finding your Tadasana. Mm, just reach the arms high on the inhale. On the exhale, let's sweep the arms back, bend the knees, re uh, hinge forward, reach the sternum forward. Good, let's reach the arms forward and up on the inhale. On the exhale again, bend the knees, sweep the arms back, reach your sternum forward. Let's do it one more time. You know, let's reach the arms forward and up, slow and controlled. Exhale again, sweep the arms back, bend the knees. Beautiful, interlace your fingers. Maybe separate the feet a little wider. Start to hinge at your hips, let your torso go, right? Letting the head go. Start to reach the arms up, maybe forward. Again, heavy head. Just 
decompressing the spine, right? adding the stretch in the shoulders, the chest. I had no effort to hold it up. Nice and nice and buoyant. Jaws relaxed. Breath is smooth and steady. Toes, notice if you're gripping the mat. Can you just soften and trust there? Nice. Take a deep breath. Let's release the hands to the mat. Halfway lift on the inhale. On the exhale, left foot step it way back. Left knee to the mat. Right knee is bending, framing the right foot. Equal weight into that right foot. So maybe uncurling the back toes, tinting your fingers, give yourself some space. Work your hips in opposing directions. Take time out the feel, right? Reaching your sternum for it. Soften where you need to soften as you allow yourself to let go. And then what can you do? How can you manipulate your body to find a little bit more stability? And feel free to stay here, option one. Feel free to take option two, hands to the thigh, shifting the hips, finding that stability, maintaining it. Where are the shoulders? Are they rounded? Are you opening across the chest and the shoulders? Where's your chin, right? Can you lengthen your cervical spine maybe a little bit more? Feel free to stay, go back to option one or stay here too, or feel free to come into option three, taking the arms out in front of you. Notice what's happening with the right knee is collapsing. Can you work inner knee towards the outer knee? Again, equal weight distributed into the front foot. Can you allow yourself to reach, trust, right? Engage but yet not allow the shoulders to round, right? Draw them back. Can you lengthen the spine maybe a little bit more? Can you notice if there's pressure in the lower back, can you begin to lift up out of the lower back, right? Feel free to stay here in two or three, or maybe take an option four, arms high. You can always go back to one, two, stay at three, or maybe come into four. Maybe close your eyes right here. Again, continue to reach but allow yourself to let go at the same time. Give yourself some space to breathe. Couple more breaths right here. Take a deep breath. Let's frame the front foot. Let's curl the back toes. Let's straighten your back leg. Step your back foot forward to meet your front. Mm. Halfway left on the inhale. Folding forward on the exhale. Arms, let's reach them high on the inhale. And then how slowly can we smooth out this trans uh, transition? Let's pause here first. So engage the thighs, breathing into the size of the waist. Energize the arm, right? Lengthen, maybe spread the fingers, lengthen through the fingertips. Check in with the lower back. How can you manipulate the front ribs to take any pressure out? Check in with the shoulders. How much space do you think there is between the shoulders and ears? Maybe close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Folding forward on the exhale. Here we go, working the second side. Halfway lift on the inhale. On the exhale, right foot step it way back. Right knee to the mat. Uncurling the back toes. Shifting your hips forward. Tinting your fingers equal weight into the left foot. Reaching your sternum port. Maybe close your eyes. Truly experience each inhale and each exhale. And feel free to stay here in one. Maybe come into option two. Where can you provide yourself a little bit more space? Even though your eyes may be closed, just trust. Trust yourself that you can feel. Trust yourself that you can find that stability. Trust yourself that you can lighten, right? Maybe extend the arms forward in option three or not. Scan your bodies, where can you let go?
and maybe option four, the arms high. Maybe shifting the hips a little bit more. Reaching and then letting go. Trust yourself that you can close the eyes. That you can relax your shoulders in whatever direction you have. If the arms are out in front of you, same thing. Relax the shoulders. Nice. Take a deep breath. Let's frame the left foot. Curl the back toes, straighten your back leg. Very carefully, step your back foot forward to meet your front. Mm, halfway left on the inhale. Folding forward on the exhale. Arms, let's reach them high on the inhale. Mm, prayer hands, heart center. Tadasana. Here we go, let's reach the arms high on the inhale. Folding forward on the exhale. Halfway lift on the inhale. Left foot, step it back. Left knee to the mat. Let's straighten your front leg, right? Give your hamstring some space. So if you need to slide the heel forward, slide it forward. Framing the front foot. If you need some space, even more space, if you need to take your hands to a box or books, take them there. Otherwise, maybe tinting your fingers, really digging into the right heel, right? Hugging the right head back, reaching your sternum forward on the inhale. Start to work the torso a little deeper. Feel free to slide your right heel as far in front of you as you need to, just to accommodate what's going on in your hamstring, right? what you're experiencing as you stretch and breathe into it. So coming into this half split, right? If you wanna work it further, right? Feel free to slide the right heel a little further forward, maybe even off the mat if it's not already there. So then see, trust yourself, see what happens, right? If you take both hands to the right foot, a right ankle, find that stability, right? So as long as you're digging into that right heel, hugging the right hip back, working the left hip forward, you can hang out here, right? Don't necessarily need hands to balance. Mm -hmm. Just using your own personal leverage. Maybe start to work the torso a little closer. Right. Reaching the sternum forward. Mm -hmm. Then hands back to mat. And then just begin to sit back towards the left heel. Right. Maybe even on the left heel to stretch the thigh. So we've already done the stretch standing and we'll do a setting. And then Notice, if that is not uncomfortable on your knee, do not do it. If it's not uncomfortable and you can take a block and wedge it under your right hip to sit on it, take the pressure off, do so. Maybe even just keeping your hands, tinting your fingers, engaging your belly, just sitting a little lighter as opposed to sitting heavy. And again, maybe you take the arms, right? And just trust that you can balance there to the ankle. You can always tint your fingers. You can also take that stretch into the hamstring as well as the left quad by hinging the torso forward. Maybe working the forehead towards the knee or shin. Nice. Very slowly, shift forward to return the bend to your right knee. So we're gonna add in a twist. Left hand, we're gonna plant it to the inside of the foot. Equal weight into the right foot. Take the right arm and extend it high. This could be you. Back knee off the mat, curl in the toes. Lengthening forward, hugging the right hip back, taking the right arm up. Scan your bodies, right? Give yourself the opportunity to experience that weight equally into the right foot. Feel free, nothing wrong with moving that right foot towards the edge of the mat a little bit more and then begin to work through the uh, big toe mound. Right? And as you work through the big toe mound or the right foot, can you soften your toes? Maybe close your eyes, right? Maybe you're like, you know what? I'm feeling pretty good in my back. I wanna take this twist a little deeper, per hand twist. It's always an option, listen to your back, find the length. Let go of any tension to experience the ease.
Mm. Both hands frame in the front foot. Step your back foot forward to meet your front. Good, halfway lift on the inhale. Folding forward on the exhale. Inhale as you reach the arms high. So then how smoothly, again, can you slow down this transition into the second side? Let's pause here and Irv the Hastasana. Again, energize and let go at the same time. Take a deep breath in. Slowly folding forward on the exhale. Very nice, Half, halfway lift on the inhale. Right foot, step it back. Right knee to the mat. Straighten your left leg. Slide the heel forward. If you need some space, tend to your fingers, dig into the heel, work hip back, work back hip forward. Reach your sternum forward, coming into Ardha Hanuman, taking a stretch into the hamstring. <coughs> Again, feel free if you need to slide the left heel forward, slide it forward. Trust yourself. Regardless of if your balance was wobbly on the other side, trust yourself that you can take hands off the mat, take them to the left foot. Again, engaging, hinging, finding that stability. allowing yourself to fall out right and jump right back in there and then notice how you're feeling on the inside mentally mm. when you find yourself maybe falling out so you just kind of jump back on the horse right you ask yourself a series of questions as to why or just do you allow that to be your experience? Only to try again. Good. And then as you start to slide the front heel in to have a seat towards the right heel. <coughs> again, maybe you're sitting here, right? Minimizing what you experience if there's a lot of pressure in the right knee. Really listen to your knees. Mm, discomfort, one thing. Sharp shooting pain, no bueno, right? So be aware of that. Again, maybe just sitting is perfect, right? You can always wedge a block under this left hip. Mm, and then maybe you begin to walk the hands forward, reaching the sternum forward, maybe trusting that balance again. Taking the hands to either side of the foot, working the torso. Let's re-bend the left knee, adding in our twist, planting the right hand, equal weight into the left foot, maybe curled in the back toes, heart spinning up towards the ceiling. So allow yourself to experience the fullness of that twist. Mm. Allow yourself to take your gaze a little deeper to really feel that twist from the inside. Less about forcing it, right? Less about arms and legs. More about what you're experiencing on the inside. So arms and legs just for a little support to help out in the stability. We're not totally reliant on pressing. Beautiful. Let's frame the front foot. Let's step your uh, front foot back. Bring the big toes and heels together to touch. Our actually big toes together to touch. Spread your fingers here in plank. Notice if you're heavy in the hips, can you lift the hips? Can you press up into that space? 
between your shoulder blades a bit more, reaching your sternum forward. Notice if your head is heavy. You'll feel it in the back of your neck. Mm -hmm. So again, imagine yourself to be pulled forward as you firm up your thighs, hug your hips in, take your gaze into your right hand. Vasi Stasana, left ankle or stacks on the right, maybe left hand, left hip. Notice if the hips are heavy, can you lift the hips? Can you begin to root into the palm, but lengthen up the arm? Maybe folding the top arm high, maybe keeping the top hand on the hip, right? Again, ask yourself, what are you experiencing at right shoulder? Is it burning? Is it heat? Can you cool it off? And what can you do? Right. You can always take the elbow and forearm to the mat. You can also take your right knee to the mat. See if it makes sense to stack the joints, shoulder, uh, elbow, wrist. If the knee's on the mat, hip, knee. Left hand, left hip, square off your hips, coming into plank. And then let's switch sides. Maybe this shoulder, maybe this elbow, maybe this wrist. Not having it today, right? Feel free to modify it or skip it. Square off your hips coming into plank. Mm -hmm. So here you go. For the next 30 seconds, allow yourself to experience whatever it is that you would like to experience for yourself. 30 seconds, right? Give yourself that time. Whatever that is, whatever that feels like. I'll let you know when you're halfway. Good, you're halfway there. Guided by your breath. Hmm. What does that do to tell the story of your experience for the last 10, nine, eight, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Very nice. Downward facing dog. Maybe you did something that you feel mm, shoulders are burning, right? See within your downward facing dog what you can what what can you do just to kind of settle yourself. Right. If it's bending your knees to melt your torso a little closer, allow that to happen. Right. If it's separating your hands a little wider or turning your hands out in a diagonal, let that happen. From downward facing dog, slowly walk your feet forward to the top of the mat. Take your time getting there. Mm, halfway lift on the inhale, folding forward on the exhale. Inhale as you reach the arms high. Mm. Prayer hands to heart center. And then Tadasana. So here we go. We're ready to balance, right? So we've done that stretch in the thigh a couple of times already. So um, Nadradasana, or dancer pose. So we're going to take the weight into the left foot. Actually, we're going to take the right elbow to the right hip, turn the palm up as if you're serving a, you got a platter, right, on that hand. Then all we're going to do is bend the right knee. And then all you're going to do is lower your right hand. So the palm is open just the way it is. There's no twist, right? The elbow's not facing the outer edge of the mat. The elbow is in your hip. The eye of the elbow, the crease in front of the elbow, that's what's facing the right side of your mat. Then as you bend your right knee, take your hand grip to the inside of the ankle. So that might not be accessible to you. And then if that is you, take your hand to the outside. But assuming that it's accessible, again, eye of the elbow is open up, right? That's what you can see. Not the elbow itself, but the crease is what you can see. 
And this is where that stability comes in. So drawing the right knee in towards the left knee, take your left arm and extend it forward, take your left arm and extend it up. Again, right knee's drawing in towards your left knee, nice and firm in your left thigh. You know, the, the left arm's your arrow, right? Start to reach through the arrow, right? Reach in the, through the fingertips, take a deep breath and reach slowly as you start to kick back. Don't worry about lowering the left arm, right? We're just kicking back, pause in there. Take a deep breath, kick back a little further, pause. Take a deep breath, continue to kick back, pause. Deep breath, kick back. So as I kick back, my torso's automatically hinging at your hip and then the left arm's coming forward on his own. I'm not bringing it forward, take a deep breath. Kick back maybe a little further. Take a deep breath. Maybe kick back a little further. Take a deep breath. Kick back a little further. Gaze out in front of you, just beyond the arrow. Gaze is down. You're going to start to be pulled down. Momentum, right? Take a deep breath. Maybe kick back a little further. And then all that that you took to go into it, keep it as you slowly reverse out. Mm -hmm. Left arm to the hip, release. How was that? All right, so here we go, second side. So you know where you're at. Elbow to the hip, palm is open. Weight in the right foot, bend the left knee, lift it. Again, hand to the inside of the ankle, unless you don't have access to that. Again, elbow itself is on the hip. Eye of the elbow is facing the left side of your mat. Stand up nice and tall. Really firm up your right thigh. Take your right arm and reach it forward. And then reach it high. Good, let's reach. Take a deep breath, reach. Start to work your left knee in towards your right knee. That's where you're gonna find that stability and start to kick back. Chest is still lifted. Reaching strong through the arrow of the right hand. Take a deep breath, maybe kick a little further. So you're kicking that leg away from you. You should feel that stretch in your chest and your shoulder. Take a deep breath. Maybe kick back a little further. Maybe you've reached your max. Stay right here and breathe. Again, lift up out of that right hip. Take a deep breath. Maybe kick a little further. Continue to lift your chest. Continue to energize through the arrow. Take a deep breath. Maybe kick, kick a little further. Again, I'm not lowering my right arm. It's just coming down on its own. Pause where you're at. Take a deep breath. Maybe kick a little further. One more time, take a deep breath. Maybe kick a little further. And then keep all that slowly. See if you can reverse out just as calmly as you did going into it. Then let's release. All right, so let's do it on your own. Take your time. All right, again, we're gonna take the weight into the left foot. Take your time, walk yourself through it pause as much as you need to, right? Again, maybe this is not in your wheelhouse today. So we've done this stretch already. Bend the knee, hold onto the back of the foot, right? You can always go there as your option. Otherwise work it, trust yourself. Allow yourself to be a little uncomfortable. Make it all about the kick, less about the arrow. The arrow will shoot but make it all about your kick. So you got to pull that bow, right? The arrow the arrow's only going to travel as far as you pull the bow. Remember that. The bow's the right leg. Allow yourself to pull, right? Not actually you pull the leg, but imagine if someone's behind you holding onto your ankle and they're pulling the leg back, your arrow for you or your bow for you. Very nice. Mm-hmm. Good. Take your time. Beautiful. Good stuff, Susan. And then see if you can make that transition out just as smooth, just as strong as it was going into it. And then just trust, you start to feel a little wobbly, just pause. But allow that transition out to be just as smooth as the transition that you took going into it. Very nice. <coughs> Good job, Susan, pretty impressive. And then when you're ready, do that second side. Good stuff. So remember, balancing is just all about working at it, right? You know, we don't have to trip and fall when we're strong, our core is strong, and we, we've been practicing balancing poses. This will pay huge dividends 
if you do trip and fall. But just because you trip doesn't mean you have to fall. Right? Take your time. Mm -hmm. Remember, allow that bow. Just imagine someone's holding on to, someone standing behind you. I'm standing behind you. I'm holding on to that ankle. I'm holding on to the front of the ankle. And I'm actually pulling you back. So as you start to kick back, yes. Good stuff. Nice. And that, that right arm would come down. The tighter you pull the bow, <coughs> the arm would just come down on its own. Let me see if you can slow the transition down. Very nice, Susan. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. Nice. Beautiful. Bravo. Bravo. It's one of my, it, to me, it's one of the most beautiful yoga poses. And when you could just kind of allow yourself to experience the grace and the ease and find that stability and trust that comes along with it. Mm, it's good stuff. Let's come to our knees. All right. We'll separate our knees and our feet hip distance apart. Um, let's curl the toes, right? So we'll lift the heels, curl in the toes. So the heels come up a little higher, just in case you want to reach for them. Um, and then let's take the hands to the small of the back. Firming up your thighs. So spreading your fingers, giving yourself as much support as you possibly can or that you need, wrapping the elbows and lengthening your spine on the inhale to start to press the hips forward a bit. And then start to round back, right? Mm -hmm. So start to wrap those elbows in. So imagine yourself standing or on your knees rather, imagine there's a wall in front of you. See if you can feel those two hip points. So as you press the hips forward just a bit, so you can lengthen and then you can open up and then you can round, soften the throat. So feel that lift happen. Even though you're bending backwards, find the chest opening qualities right. in the pose as opposed to how far you can bend backwards. Less about the bend, more about the opening. Mm. Gazing forward, hands to your hips, uncurl the toes. Bring the knees closer together, bring the feet closer together, sitting back onto your heels, coming into hero's pose, sitting up nice and tall. You can always place a wedge underneath, uh, between your ankles and sit there, or a roll towel or blanket to take the pressure off the knees. Sit tall, lengthen, broaden, close the eyes, let go. Nice. Let's do it again. Hands to knees, right? So curl the toes. Take the hands to the small of the back. Spread your fingers. If you need that support, wrap the elbows in. Firm up your thighs. Take your right arm and reach it forward out in front of you. And then take your right arm straight up to the ceiling. So let's start to reach and lengthen. Wrapping your left elbow in. So using that left hand for support, press the hips forward lightly. Start to round back. So as you start to open up the chest, Gazing just beyond the fingertips of the right hand. Maybe that's as far as you need to go. Feel free, you can keep that left hand where it is for support. You can take that left hand off the hip, start to reach the hand, maybe for the heel, maybe fingertips come there. Maybe you can get more of a grip on the heel, pressing the hips forward a bit. Again, lengthening as you round back, softening your throat. So no crunching in the back, we're still opening up. Very slowly, take your gaze forward. Take your left hand back to the small of the back. Take your right hand to the small of the back. Spread your fingers. Again, engage the thighs, lengthen the spine. Wrap the right elbow in. Take your left arm and reach it forward. Take your left arm and reach it high. Again, reach. Reach, reach, reach. And then as you press the hips forward a bit, Wrapping the right elbow in, start to round back, softening your throat. Again, pressing those hips forward so that will prevent us from crunching into the back. Feel the lift happening, the length, soften your throat. Good, gazing forward, 
Keep your right hand where it is. Let's take your left arm, or left hand rather. Spread your fingers again, wrapping the elbows in. Press the hip, lengthen the spine, start to round back. And then maybe you take both hands, maybe reach for the heels. Mm. Press in the hips forward, rounding back. So no crunching in the back. Soften your throat. Good, hands back to support your back. Gazing back to center. Nice, uncurl the toes. Knees and feet come a little closer together. Sitting back onto the heels. Maybe separating the feet a little wider, sitting back um, maybe between the heels. Sitting tall. Closing the eyes. Very nice. Blinking the eyes to open. <clears throat> Let's come to lay on your backs. Just hug your knees into your chest. Squeeze them nice and snug. Take your arms, extend them out to the side. Shift your hips off to the right a bit. Drop both knees off to the left. So one variation of the twist, if there's a different variation you like to experience, allow that to happen. So less about how far are the legs, um, how close they are to reaching the mat, more about letting go, more about weighting down the back of the right shoulder. You might have to lift the shoulders just to kind of smooth out maybe clothing or flesh. And then gazing, gazing um, to where there's no strain in your neck, no unnecessary strain. No strain that would prevent you or limit how you are, the quality in which you're able to breathe. See if you can smooth that out. An opportunity to take your your, your 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 gaze inward, little little self inquiry as to what you're experiencing. How present are you? How much aware are you are are you um, in the way you in what you're breathing? Maybe you've kind of got lost in thought. Let's untwist, shift hips left, drop the knees off to the right. Don't expect it to be the same level of depth, right? Allow yourself to be different. And as I was mentioning, maybe you've gotten yourself kind of lost in thought. And then the next thing you know, it's like a, a timer, a chime happened. Maybe it was the sound of a bird or a dog and it kind of brought your awareness back. Just allow yourself again. To take in every inhale and exhale. Make them truly important, right? Don't miss them. We don't get them, we don't get them back. But don't allow yourself to be frustrated, right? And angry at yourself because those distractions. Just notice when they happen and then smoothly. Bring yourself back. Good, let's untwist. Let's hug your knees back into your chest again. Maybe draw your forehead up towards your knees and just give yourself a nice loving hug. And as you relax the head, send the legs and the arms out in front of you. Just allow yourself to rest. Shavasana.
just slowly letting go of movement, the physical part of our asana. Start to bring in those steel meditative qualities. Softening the muscles within your face. You allow your belly to rise and to fall. Allow yourself to drift into a sense of peace, comfort. And even in the midst of that stillness, even in the midst of that darkness that the eyes are closed, just allow yourselves to awaken. with a different set of lenses in which to see through. Mm. If you didn't want to gently reawaken your bodies. Mm. Taking the arms and extend them over your head. And you're flexing the toes. Limping through the fingertips. Making your way onto your right side. You're pressing up to sit. Thanking yourselves for taking this time out. And as you leave this space, leave in peace, shine your light and spread your love. Taking your prayer hands to your third eye for beautiful thoughts, to your lips for kind words, and let's return them back to our hearts as we continue to nurture the love that resides in and all around each and every one of us and until we meet again namaste